All right, so now we're going to talk about boots, gloves, so feet, hands, accessories, cold weather accessories, whatever you want to call them. So there's a lot to keeping your hands and feet warm in the cold. We're issued a lot of good things, but there are little things that can uh, help improve your comfort in the field and other cold weather environments. So to start off with the lightest, lightest level of foot protection, these are the Garmont uh t8 extreme i think the cold weather ones they have gore-tex but they do not have insulation inside of them so something to think about whenever you're wearing winter boots is always to have good socks so like we talked about just like a base layer for your body you're going to want to have good socks so these darn tough tan socks that you're issued are good they're made of merino wool merino wool is really good because it retains warmth when wet so a good merino wool sock or a good, like even synthetic sock isn't bad. Whatever you do want to do, do not wear cotton socks in the winter because your feet will get wet. It won't dry quickly. Your feet will get cold and uh, you're going to have a bad time. So merino wool socks, different thicknesses are good. Some people wear super thick socks. Me, I think you're going to want to wear a little thinner sock, thinner merino wool sock, high quality. It'll dry quicker because I'd rather have my feet like a little colder, but dry than super thick cushion sock that gets wet, stays wet for a longer time. Um, in my experience, my feet just get colder. So thin wool sock is going to help you out. There's little things you can do too. Even with an uninsulated waterproof, waterproof boot, almost everything, almost nothing is waterproof if you're if it's exposed to water long enough, but you can help it out by uh, putting like, one, anytime you have snow building up on your boots, knock it off a little bit so it doesn't sit there, melt, and then get your boot wet instantly. But um, there are little things, too. Like a lot of people have heard of Camp Dry. You can buy this at Walmart. It's like six or seven bucks per bottle. You can spray a little coating on your boot. It just helps protect the boots a little bit, keep them from getting wet as long, quite as quickly. But it will wear off. So if you're doing stuff, rucking, running around, it's going gonna, it's gonna to wear off eventually. But it's nice at first. It gives you a little layer of protection but eventually the water will soak into the boots. And that's when you look for something that has Gore-Tex or waterproof. When it says waterproof, it doesn't mean the water's going to beat up and uh, slide right off the boot every time. There's usually a membrane in there, like in between the outer shell of the boot and like the internal layer, membrane of like Gore-Tex or some other waterproof material. So down, my feet get pretty cold, but these kind of boots that are uninsulated, just waterproof, are usually good down to about, I don't know, about 35, even low 30s if you're if you're active. So if you're moving around a lot, you're not going to want to have a bunch of insulation in your feet because they'll sweat and then they'll get wet and then you're going to be really cold. So your next step up from that are a lot of people issued these Danners or you might have gotten issued those Rocky S2Vs, um, insulated boots from CIF. But these boots are actually really good. They are huge, heavy, but if you're not doing a whole lot of movement, they're, they work pretty well. The downside of these are the older style cold weather boots issued by CIF that had these little booties um, is that the insulation is built into these boots. So you can't remove it. What I think is really good about these are at night, if you're in Arctic tent or whatever you're in, you could pull these out. And uh, what I would do is I would just sleep with them on or I'd, I'd take two pairs of these and I'd swap them every day. So I can dry one and then wear one or wear one to sleep in and your body heat will help dry them out a little bit. That way when you're putting your foot in your boot in the morning, it'll dry feet, warm feet to start. Again, both of these have some sort of waterproof membrane inside of them and insulation either built in or in the form of a uh, little insulated booty. The most extreme level of cold weather boots we have issued to us are these Mickey Mouse boots, um, vapor barrier boots, I think is what they're actually called, vapor lock boots, but they will keep your feet warm down to the most extreme temperatures, like ice fishermen in like Alaska and other places use these boots. Um, they're super, super warm. Again, not great for extended movement, but if you're static or if you're dealing with heavy moisture, because they are made of rubber, so they're the most waterproof out of all of these. These have that, you know, raw hide leather, whatever you call it, that doesn't stand up to water that well. These also come with these extremely thick, I believe they're, yeah, wool. So 80% wool, 20% cotton socks. Um, 
a pair with those. Doesn't mean you have to wear those with that. You can wear these Zarn Tufts. They're pretty good. They're also wool. They're probably in the 80s or 90 percentage. Um, something to think about with when you're wearing boots in the winter, especially if there's snow or deep snow. Gators are really good. You can wear these with regular summer boots. You can wear them with winter boots. What they'll do is help keep the snow out of your boots and other moisture. They'll also provide like a little bit of protection on the lace lace part where snow can get up in there and melt and then have better chance of seeping into your boots. So think about wearing gaiters in the winter. They do a, they help you out. Keep your feet warm, keep your feet dry, and uh, protect your boots from the elements a little bit. All right, last boot accessory we're going to talk about now are the – Yak tracks, creepers, whatever you want to call them. They have like little little ice spikes on the bottom of them. They stretch around the toe and the heel of your boot. The downside of these is they fall off all the time if you're running through the snow. You might not notice that a lot of guys will probably have one of these. Things you can do, which I'm not saying you're not it's gonna be perfect, but you can put like a little piece of five fifty cord or a little piece of engineer tape or something on top of the the toe portion of your boot right here. It can help a little bit. Five fifty cord will eventually wear through this rubber, so it's not perfect, but it can help a little bit. That helps you whenever you have that really packed down snow and turns into like a slick ice surface or you're actually on ice. You're going to want to use these. Um, they'll help you from busting your butt. All right. While we're on the topic of footwear, snowshoes. Snowshoes, they come with this little wing part on them. This is for when you're, you got to think about it. Like the center of gravity right now on these snowshoes is about, right here. So when you're wearing a rucksack or something heavy on your back, your center of gravity is going to be further back. So this is when you're going to want to use this wing extension on that, um, on the snowshoes. Or if the snow is super deep, you can take them off, the wings off, you unscrew this, and there's these little heel sections, and the wings come off. These are more manageable. This is what you'll see people using most often. And whenever you put your, you slide your boot in like this, you need to leave clearance for your toes because it's moved like this. So whenever you're walking, the snowshoe can move freely. Um, they're most, you can use them with these. I actually would not recommend it because they're so big and bulky. They're probably not going to be able to fit through that window there. You're going to want to use one of these mid-level boots. These straps kind of suck. You can do little things, tape them down. Um, make the front part fixed and then just to do the back, the heel portion, but it's never going to be perfect. You just got to figure out what works for you. Um, this little heel riser in the back is designed to stop your heel for when you're going uphill. So instead of putting a lot of strain on the back of your, like where your Achilles and your heel is at, it'll stop your heel right there as you're traversing uphill. It'll help you out a little bit. The spikes will grab into the snow and ice a little better. And it helps you move in deep snow. Snowshoes. All right. So, hands. Keeping your hands warm. Most people will run around with these little, like, thinner, kind of like some people wear shooter gloves or call them shooter gloves or just a thin layer of, glove, of uh, hand protection. Usually they're not waterproof. They're just some sort of, like, light fleece. And they're good for not that cold temperatures, but they'll get the job done for a little while. Something you can do is uh we'll talk about that in a minute so lightest layer of protection really a lightest layer is like a mechanics glove a shooter glove then you get into something that's like a lighter fleece like this and after that you have these or outdoor research gloves that were issued out that are actually they don't fit super tightly to your hand but they're really high quality gloves they have gore-tex in them a leather palm which helps with the durability and they're not bad they're they're good down to, I mean, everybody's personal preference, but they're good down to about, if you're static, um, 20s, I don't know. You can get down lower if you're moving or you're doing a lot. you got to manipulate your weapon. You're probably going to need to have all the fingers. But um, sitting around, it's you're going to get colder than you do when you're moving, obviously. So temperature preference is on you. Next layer after that, or next level of hand protection after that are these um, trigger finger mittens. These are actually really good. They have a removable liner. So just like with upper body or, you know, equic system layers, this is kind of like what you think of as your insulated mid layer. 
vest has a synthetic down inside of it. You should not wear these just like on their own. They're not very durable. You'll tear them up. This shell portion is the waterproof part that you wear on top. And it has like a little trigger finger thing. Super, not super great for dexterity, but if you had to, you can get it done. It helps a little bit. These are really, really good gloves. Actually, like probably wear those the most in the winter. I have these little collars on them or leashes, not collar, that you can cinch down to your wrist like this. So you can like quick shed them and then do something if you had to, then pull it back on. Put your hand in there and use them. And then that way they're attached to you and you don't have to worry about doing something quick and leaving them in the snow behind you. The next level up from those, we got a few of these last year. I haven't actually used them, but they're along the same line as the other trigger finger mittens. They're a little bigger. If there's a lot of like room in the glove, it's actually sometimes better. If you wear tight fitting gloves and wear or or boots really should have hit this earlier, but if you're wearing tight fitted things, a lot of times that'll restrict blood flow to that area and your hands or your feet are just gonna get colder. You wanna have a little bit of a gap in that warm air to get trapped so that your hands warm up. That's why mittens are warmer than gloves. Because you have that, that uh space inside where your fingers can heat up that area. You could wear so this is what I was gonna mention earlier with a like a thin insulation. So if you think about these gloves, like an upper layer, like a waffle top or a shell, you're not just going to wear that in the elements, right? If there's snow or any kind of rain or anything like that, these will get soaked and then your hands are going to get cold. But they have the full finger shells and then you could even use the trigger finger shells of these mittens as your outer shell. You can wear these as like a combo kind of deal where now you have your waterproof layer to help retain heat inside the glove too and then if you need to pull off to do something more like that requires dexterity you can have these thinner gloves on that's something you can think about it works um but your hands again one there and gloves are going to be a little bit colder than mittens but you'll have it's a trade-off more dexterity you can also use something that's pretty effective as those little hand warmers you know the packs you rip them open they're activated by the air and they warm up those aren't bad they don't last forever you lose a lot of heat. Everybody knows. Everybody's been told. You lose something percentage of your heat through your head. It's actually not like some people say, like, oh, you lose 50% of the heat through your head. That's ridiculous. It's not true because of, like, the surface area of your head. But you do lose a lot of heat, and it's a big comfort thing, too. Everybody, like, personally, my ears get super cold whenever, you know, you're running around outside. It's just like a, a comfort thing. The fleece cap, these are actually really good. It's made of, let's see. Synthetic cap, synthetic micro sleeves, 100% polyester. All right, so it's a synthetic insulation. They make wool caps. Those are pretty good, too. You've seen people with the big fur trapper hats. Uh, that's considered a natural material, like rabbit fur or something like that, which has the best insulation properties, but obviously you're not going to run around in those. So fleece cap's going to be your go-to. Pretty comfortable. You know, that'll keep some of the heat inside your head. What you want to do is, like, a lot of times bring two of these to the field. You're definitely going to want to have one at all times that's dry because if this thing gets soaked, um, it'll take a little while to dry. It'll retain some warmth, but it'd be nice to have a, a warm one to throw on. Or if you're sleeping at night, like, and your sleeping bag, I like to have one, one that I just keep in there and I put a dry one on at night and it's really nice. Or you could, and then you put, take your wet hat and you stuff it like in your sleeping bag and under your body or something like that. And then your body heat will help dry it out. Along with a hat, you can wear a, some sort of neck gaiter. Um, a lot of people call it gator neck. That's just wrong. Think about it. People write things in the army, they put, gator comma neck it's just weird it's not a gator neck it's a neck gator it's a pet peeve of mine but anyway these are also made out of different materials synthetic generally um it insulates your neck you can pull it up over your face covid you're gonna have to always pull something up over your face in the winter i'd recommend using that um so that's just another thing that can help retain some of the warmth and block the wind around your your face and head and ears so there's lots of different things you can do obviously don't put your hands in your pocket who cares? It's winter.